episode 13! How the fuck are we doing, guys? What's up? Everybody in the back! Holy shit! Guys, we have a really, really good show for you. Oh man, we got, alright, so tonight we have uh, some very badass musicians. We got Thing of Twins in the motherfucking house. They're going to be coming yeah. out. They're alternative rockers, really badass dudes. They'll be coming out later. We got Akila, the very funny Akila, coming out later on tonight. We got Chelsea Grove coming out tonight. And my very special guest, Brandon Bricks in the motherfucking house. And we're going to be talking to him about his badass viral video about that racist potluck that happened recently. It's going to be cool. Um, all right, so let's get started, guys. Episode 13, lucky number 13. Woo! Yeah, I mean, judging by the last couple episodes, this one's got to be a good one, all right? It has <laughs> to be. Uh, let's get this fucking monologue going. We're leaving next week. Uh, we're going on break. It's going to be a mid-season little finale here. And uh, I'm taking my family back to the motherland. We're going back home to Texas. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be great, man. I'm so excited to uh, invite my uh, my... my little Caucasian son to his Mexican grandparents. It's going to be beautiful. I might just fucking leave him there, honestly. I, I only packed enough diapers for one trip. I'm going to fucking... We're going to pick him up. We'll, we'll, they'll ship him back to us overnight at the end of the summer or something, and he'll pop out of that box knowing how to make tortillas and cut grass. I'll stop saying shut up and be like, Cállate! You know? Yeah. Like, back then, he's going to understand. He's gonna, anyone ever seen Blood In, Blood Out? He's going to be like that little half-white, half-Mexican kid, you know? Yeah. Always trying to prove himself and shit. That's going to be my son. Um, but the reason, the reason I'm going back home is uh, my little sister is graduating from high school. So proud of her. Uh, big deal though. Like, I mean, my, I, I'm a good parent. I don't give a shit if my son graduates. I don't care if he goes to college. I just don't want him to give me any grandbabies until he's older, you know? Like, much older. Like, as a Mexican, I got it whenever I was older. I was 24, okay? I was the, the ripe old age of 24 when I had my first kid. By my age, my, my parents didn't know English. They had two kids, okay? So, I mean, I think we're doing all right. Um, mm. The past few uh, past few days, people kept coming up to me and they're like, "Oh, I'm so sorry about your show, but you shouldn't have said that racist shit." I'm like, "Hey, I'm not fucking Roseanne, all right? I know I look like a goddamn lesbian, but I'm not her. It's not my Twitter. It's not me." And you know what? She was on Ambient. She knows how to party. What can you say? Uh, she, at least she didn't rape anybody, right? I mean, I don't think she did. I'm pretty sure she didn't. So she should bounce back from this shit. Um, I don't mind if I'll be your stand-in, okay? You can pay me extra, I don't care. I'll fucking do it. Uh, her boss is black at NBC. You shouldn't be saying racist shit. Stop watching Planet of the Apes. Fucking... And Eric said this earlier, it was really funny. Um, when it comes to racism, once you go black, you never go back to your job. Ah, I like it. Good job, Eric. <laughs> mm. What else is going on? Samantha B called, uh, which Trump was it? Ivanka Trump, a feckless cunt. And after Googling feckless cunt, uh, I saw that the definition is to not have any honor, which is kind of ironic. Really shameless to say cunt in public. Kind of feckless of you, Samantha, but whatever. Uh, <laughs> let's see here, what else is going on? Uh, I'm, just, I'm just sad she can't land a joke. Two ladies this week are going to go. We gotta try harder. <laughs> now, some serious news, some marijuana news. Cops in Georgia stopped two parents from giving their son seizure medicine, me medical marijuana, resulting in the worst seizure of his life. And the only thing I can say is I'm glad these cops are thinking they're keeping these fucking thugs off the street, these seizure stopping thugs. So you know, they're really doing their job. Shooting unarmed people and stopping fucking parents that are trying to save their kids. Good brave, job guys. Brave, brave, brave fucking men. Oh man. <laughs> Keep doing your job, guys. And of course, let's end it out with Jeff Sessions, public enemy number one. Um He's the guy who's running a crusade against marijuana, okay? He's doing everything he can to try to stop the legalization. 
He's cracking down on illegal dispensaries, which is causing all those customers to go to legal dispensaries, in the end, helping the cause. So thanks a lot, you retard. All righty. So anyways, guys, what do you say? Let's get this show started. Ladies and gentlemen, first guest of mine. It's a real cool dude. My homie, ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together. Brandon Bruce. Yeah. Brandon, what's going on, man? Yo, mama, what happened? <laughs> Tell me about your your uh, your videos you've had coming out. Man, I don't even know who I am. Um, you had uh, how many views is it now? We on on the races barbecue. I mean barbecue lady. We had um, twenty seven. We're gonna have thirty thousand by the end of this week. That's yeah. badass, man. Whoa. Good fucking job. So. All right, that happened really quickly. We were talking about, like, that worked out because you got the timing down quick. You yeah. saw the opportunity. Yeah. And just to give background, what happened with this racist lady? Basically, this woman had the audacity. Listen, she had the audacity to call the police because some niggas wanted to barbecue. <laughs> yeah, right. Ah. And you saw that shit, and you're like, I got to make a skit out of this. Right? Nigga, the bitch had to charge her son on her phone. That bitch was retarded. Turns out the bitch was a doctor. <laughs> And you saw that, and you're like, I got to make fun of this shit, right? No, I, I, it was just, I was tired of all this injustice in America. I'm tired of all my black brothers being slain, and nobody putting humor to this shit. It's always serious. It's always white people being annoying, but they're racist <coughs> and all shit. And I was like, you know what? <coughs> Let me put some smiles on motherfuckers' faces and do something and stop smoking weed and not getting up off my ass and being productive. Hey, what's weed got to hey, do with it? Hey, shut the fuck up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't got nothing to do with my man. You ass. asked me the question, nigga, and I'm telling you, sometimes our biggest, our biggest letback is the same thing that's blessing you. Sometimes you got to put things in perspective and put your ass and put it to gear or else you're going to get left by the motherfucking dust and nobody's going to give a fuck about your bitch ass. There you go. Brandon Bricks is out here making moves, man. So let's talk about the, the most recent music video we did together. Oh, man, it was tons of fun. Dude, you killed that shit, bro. I want to ask you, why are you taking music more seriously now? Because I've been telling you, know you for years now that you were good at that shit. Because we finally got somebody to do this shit for free. That's right. Shay, <laughs> give him a shout out, by the way. Hey, you know what? My big friend, Cal, I... Kyle, I can't say your last name. M was it? Mine. 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 I know. It, I know, man. I know you like your heritage, bro. And I, and I appreciate all that shit you've done for me, man. I appreciate it. You He's fucking a good ass, producer. good dude, good oh, guy. Good and guy. so that's who you did those last yeah, two videos man. with, dude. We did it. And honestly, man, I'm writing something right now. I want to get back in the booth, and I might. It might be a little bit more serious, but a little bit more funny too. I don't know this shit. I don't know. I'm just. I'm just having fun right now, man. And so you do your shit food based, right? I do everything food based, yes, or topical. Something that's in the uh, in the uh, in the R, you know. What I'm in the in the atmosphere of internet and whatever's you know what's happening in, in the now, you know? right? Right. And so, is there anything coming up you want to promote? You know what? Right now, I'm just going to promote productivity and me uh, staying busy. I don't want to let you guys know something and something happens bad, but something's going to be in the work soon. Uh, Day Dead? What about Day Dead. Day guys, Dead? we're working on a short film together. Day Dead. It's gonna be about zombies. All right. It's gonna be like fucking. I don't even know how to describe it to you. It's going to be badass. It's going to be coming out in October, so look out for that shit. Yep, pretty much. And, um, all right, so guys, make some fucking noise. Brandon Briggs! Yeah. Yeah. Gonna check out that barbecue video. Check out our music video. Pat Savage. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together. Aquila! Give it up for the guitar. Yeah, yeah. Norman yeah. Davis. Norman Davis. That sounds like a d guitar player's name. It's black one, though. Sounds like a black one, though. Sorry to disappoint. <laughs> you didn't disappoint. You came late. <laughs> so technically, you are the black guitar guy. <laughs> this is the exact mic that I've been trying to tell my parents that it's going to make me grow as a comic. You know what I mean? And they're like, don't go to that garage mic. It's in an alley. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody in this garage is made it yet, so I don't feel like we're about to get shot up, so I feel safe. <laughs> that was last week. That was last week? Oh, 
There are Mexicans playing music next door. I feel at home. I'm from LA, so I really feel at home. Yeah. And I didn't realize last time I came here, I was trying not to act like I really didn't like the music because some people here were making fun of me like, dang, they always be practicing. I was like, can they turn it up? <laughs> I grew up in South Central on like 34th and Central. And I didn't realize till like a couple of weeks ago, I was walking by a, a quinceanera and I didn't realize that for years, instead of paying attention to the gunshots, I went to sleep to mariachi music. <laughs> like all through my childhood, because Mexicans never go to sleep. <laughs> they work and they stay up and party all night. I don't know. They've been on ecstasy for years and we didn't even realize it. <laughs> so glad I brought my jacket. It is colder than a white man's thoughts outside. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Like I need some protection out here, you know? <laughs> I'm just like, at this point with the police, shoot a nigga in the ass, you know what I mean? <laughs> just shoot him in the ass. You know how to have back target practice. Like, you know how to shoot us in the back. If you could just do it lower in the buttocks. Just shoot a nigga somewhere so he can take his kids to school the next week, you know what I mean? Damn. What's crazy about that is I think that black people are so amazing that and the police are so stupid. Cause you know they always be like, I thought I saw a gun. Which I don't know what iPhone 8 looks like a Magnum 47. <laughs> but okay, let me get that copy to that phone. I'm just thinking that one day they're gonna shoot a guy that has no hands and no legs. And they gonna be like, I thought I saw a gun. Like what nigga <laughs> shoot you with this pinky toe? <laughs> Like, niggas are amazing, but damn, we not shooting people with our toes, okay? <laughs> and then if they did shoot the handicapped dude, like, if they made niggas handicapped, we would be the coolest handicapped niggas around. Do you understand? Niggas are putting rams on their wheelchair. You can't keep us down too long. I just hate watching the news. I feel like even the newscaster doesn't have any sympathy for the victim. You know what I mean? She'd just be reading a teleprompter like, Today in Los Angeles, JJ was shot and killed. They called him Nuck Nuck because he did nigger shit. He sold tube socks and DVDs out of his uncle's truck. Next coming up is squirrels who can swim on YouTube. Like, You're not going to show a high school graduation picture? <laughs> He was standing outside of a Foot Locker. He had just bought his last pair of Jordans. Guess the nigga should have saved his money. He had $32.84 left on his EBT card. The money will remain on the card because he did not trust his baby mama enough to give her the code. Next coming up, Beyonce and Jay-Z are planning on having triplets and Jay-Z will carry the babies. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> that transition is fucking crazy. I don't know how fried chicken and Newports always get into these killings, but if I hear another fucking... Newport fried chicken story at the end of these murders. Really? <laughs> yes, really. Uh, my mom is from Compton and my dad is Nigerian. So I'm really African American. Stunt on all y'all fake motherfuckers who be checking it off on your checklist. I really check it off. It's crazy because when I was growing up, like, I didn't realize that my parents. Because I was about to talk about something crazy. <laughs> Not something crazy, but I didn't realize that my parents um, didn't have a good relationship until one of my friends spent the night and she was like, your dad is asleep on the couch. Like, is he gonna go in the room? And I was like, <laughs> go in the room? <laughs> Why would my dad sleep in a bed with my mom? Like, how are they gonna stay married if they sleep in the same room? Take that dumb ass out. She was like, Akila, my dad sleeps in the room with my mom. And I was like, I didn't know that parents sleep, which is weird because I knew that they made children. So I thought that they had sex and then the dad went in the living room and slept on the couch. Like, I didn't know that y'all stayed in the bedroom. So I was looking at her like, bitch, your family about to break up. Keep your parents in that same room and see if they stay together. Stupid. It's messed up childhood. I didn't think anything was wrong with cheating either. My dad would like take me on dates with him and his girlfriend. So I didn't think anything was wrong with cheating. Until you get to school, 
and kids are like, oh, you know, your dad is only supposed to be with your mom. And I was like, what? <laughs> it was crazy because whatever job the lady had that my dad fucked around with, like, I got the hookup off of it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and she worked for Nike. I had everything Nike. <laughs> like, I had a Dooney and Burke bag when I was eight. <laughs> like, what the fuck? I was like, let's see what I'm going to wear today. The clutch or the handbag? <laughs> I'm going to go with the clutch. It's Wednesday. <laughs> Went to private school with a uniform on and a Dooney and Burke bag. <laughs> and then one time I remember for like a month, my dad didn't go out. Like, you know, he would stay home, eat dinner, and then he would go out in, at night and hang out with his girl. And he would come back in the morning and take us to school. So I didn't know anything was wrong with it. So one time he came home, it was like for a month he didn't go out. And like after a couple of weeks, I was like, yo, dad, um, bruh, what is you doing at the house? Like, I need them silver shoes for promise coming up. I need those <laughs> shoes. I, I need you to call Diane. <laughs> I need you to call Diane and reconcile. I'll be looking at my mom like, what you mean you want to work work out what? I, I need these shoes for prom, okay? <laughs> I'm trying to work out this relationship. I was be like, daddy, you know mom is fucking up. <laughs> she cooked last week, didn't cook this week. <laughs> Give Diane another chance. <laughs> I just feel like at some point my mom should have gave her a thank you card. Like, if, if any woman is out here thinking that it was just you and your husband and your marriage, girl, get it together. <laughs> I don't know why Hallmark doesn't have thank you cards for mistresses. Like they're not new. They're not new bitches. They've been here for a long time. Like thank you for not giving my husband an STD. He'll call you on our tenth anniversary. Just keep it simple. Hallmark three ninety five. Um, I live in Compton now. I live in my grandparents' old house, and. Um, my grandparents passed away a couple years ago. That's how we ended up moving in their house. And I was really, really close with my granddad. And just living, I stay in his room now, which is crazy. But I just miss him so much. But I think I got some of my comedy from him. And the other day I was driving by one of his favorite sandwich spots. And my grandfather passed away from cancer. But it was so bad that, and he was elderly, but he was starting to use the control of his bladder. You know what I'm saying? So he would just pee on himself, we'd be out in public. But he would never tell me though. So we'll be sitting out at the sandwich spot and he'll just stand up and like put his sweater in the front of his pants, like tie his sweater backwards. So the front will be covering his pants. And he'd be like, all right, uh, let's go to Ralph's. And I mean, he was like 80 some, so I knew that he had peed on himself, but I didn't want to ask him like, that you peed on yourself, you know what I'm saying? So one day I was like, I. You look ridiculous with your, if you tie the sweater in the back and you pee on the back, okay, cool. But penis in the front, his pants will be wet in the front. And I'm like, granddad, you cannot put your sweater. It just doesn't look right. Let's just go home and change. And he's like, don't nobody know I peed on myself. And I'm like, they're gonna notice when they see you walking in the front. And when they turn around, he was like, if they check around and look at my ass, they a faggot. <laughs> what? What is that? What are you talking about? He was like, they look at my ass and look at anything in the bottom. They're a fucking faggot. I'm like, no, you peed on yourself. You got nothing to do with them looking at your dick. It's peeing right there. I know, I think it's because I'm going to Nigeria in August for my cousin's wedding, and I've just been thinking about my family a lot. And my grandmother, she used to live here. My dad's mother, she's... um. She used to live here when I was a little kid, and it was so adorable when she first got here and we came from the airport. So for like a week, wherever we took her, she would read every sign that we would pass by. Colorado Boulevard. <laughs> Herb and Bates. <laughs> Lacma Center. Rodeo. So at first it's cute, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, okay, her English is getting better. You know, she wants to become a nurse. She got the job. But then after a while, I got fucking annoying of her just in the car saying shit. <laughs> there are no ladies here tonight. But I'm still going to do this joke. Um, it's 2018. I don't have a car. I don't have a boyfriend. I live with my mom. But every dude is trying to fuck me. <laughs> every dude. It's like the less I have, the more they want me. You know what I mean? I'm like, I would get my life together, but I'm doing pretty fucking good right now. You know? 
he be trying to count me like a healer, get a car. You need to move out your mom's house. Nigga, this is how God is going to work. <laughs> Starting from nothing. He can't work with me if I already got everything going on. <laughs> I took the bus here and the bus driver, he was like, oh, you look nice today. I was like, thank you. He was like, you know what? You ain't even got to pay the fares on me. I'm like, you know why he didn't charge me, right? That nigga was trying to fuck. Yeah. I know y'all be doing it real slow. Somebody walked in with a pizza earlier and asked me that I want some first. Uh, that nigga is trying to fuck. Uh, Shout out to the twins who do music. They offer me a beer. Cut it out. Uh, you know I don't drink Pabst Blue Ribbon. You saw me with my smear and all. But they trying to fuck. So they gonna offer me whatever they got. You know? What I mean? you know? That's hilarious. I don't usually run into you guys on the regular, but somehow I'm on this show. <laughs> they trying to fuck, okay? <laughs> so obvious. <laughs> so tonight, I know when y'all go home with your girlfriends and you kiss all up on her and tell her you love her and stuff, you're really cheating on that bitch. That's, that's what's really going on, okay? Thank you all so much for your time. I have a great day. Yeah. Yeah. Have a good night. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. You're fucking hilarious. Thank you. How long have you been doing comedy now? Um, five years in August. Five years? No shit. I'm going on five years too. Woo. Yeah. What got you into it? Um, my grandfather passed away. Mm -hmm. And then my friend called me and I was telling him about the funeral and everything that was happening. That was crazy. And you know how you're on the phone with somebody, you can hear them go, yeah, mm-hmm. And it's fun. I couldn't hear him anymore. And I was like, hello? And he was like, my bad. I had it on mute, nigga. I was laughing. And I was like, why are you laughing at my granddaddy funeral? And he That's was like, exactly what I was about to say. He was <laughs> like, yo, this shit is funny. And I was like, all right. Well, I wasn't really mad, but I was literally in the middle of the funeral. I was like, all right, I got to go. And he called me like every Saturday for a month straight. I was like, Man, you gotta come do comedy. And I was like, no. So what was your first set all about the funeral? It was about the funeral. <laughs> really? Yeah. He was no like, just shit. tell me, just say the exact same story you told me on the phone. And I was like, it's not gonna be funny, I'm not gonna feel it, but I'll do it so he could stop calling me. He okay. called me every Saturday morning to go to his mom. That's like, a good friend. He is a you good friend. You gotta thank him one day. I know. That's, that's really wonderful. Yeah, and awesome. so and he doesn't even do comedy anymore. He's like a musician now. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, musicians and comedians have a relationship. They do, they do. All comedians wanna like do music. I think mm -hmm. they wanna be like good at it. I wanna be like Frank Sinatra. I, I would give up my funny to be Frank Are Sinatra. you serious? I swear to God. Frank Sinatra sucks compared to, like, <gasps> Dave Chappelle. What? No, but, like, it's the style and the fucking, you know, the comedy is, like, rock star. Yeah, but it's, it's, I, I'd like to make people cry and shit. Like, uh, I don't know. That's, that's what, that's what music does comedy. to me. You know? You don't want to be a musician at all, huh? You never wanted to sing or nothing like that. I think that all... Like, musicians want to be funny, too, right? That is true. Right? That don't they true. always, like, try that shit, that I feel? True. That is I don't know. There's something about it. Yeah. And, um, that's really great. And so, you were just talking about, what, family at the funeral? I was just talking about my family at the funeral. Probably a story about my granddad covering up his feet or something. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's what this was tonight, yeah. too, when yeah. it came from that. Yeah. I like that. And you started out in, what, Compton? No, it was in Culver City at, like, Spa Cafe. Oh, okay. It was like a coffee shop. That's exactly where I started yeah, up. Yeah, it was a coffee shop. I did a coffee shop in Texas, though. It was my first time. And it was, and it ended up being a fucking, it was a, it said open mic. It turned out it was a Christian folk song. Open oh. Mic. So I went up first, and I did, like, ten minutes about Adele and porn or something like that. At and a then, Christian and then that, like some dude came up and sang about Jesus. It was really weird. Yeah, but you know what are you gonna do? That's my first time. Mm -hmm. I had to keep going from yeah. there. I love that shit. So I'm glad you. I'm glad you like fucking. You kept it going. Five I fucking did. years. It's amazing. I felt like I was. I felt like I was naked, and everybody could like see my scars and stuff, and I didn't care. Is That's that what how it I is? You I feel naked comedy. on stage? I felt naked. Well, the first time I did it. <laughs> Have you ever done that naked show? What? No. What is that? There's a naked comedy show. I forgot his fucking name. You have to be naked to do the show? You have to be in underwear. I don't know if he still does it. He's a badass dude. He used to come around. He was a cool ass guy. I don't mess up my church shows. <laughs> <laughs> I you gotta do keep church them church. Shows? Oh, yeah. Church shows pay. Really? So, what? You do clean comedy? Yeah, I just don't curse. Same what? set, just don't curse. Oh, and this is before or after, like, like, the sermon or something? Or, like. 
No, they have like a up? comedy night at church. Oh, okay, yeah. I see. Okay. They usually have comedy nights at church. I thought you go there Sunday mornings to do warm up. Oh, that would be dope. All there. That's my goal is to be like a warm up for funerals. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. That would be crazy <laughs> shit. I, cool. I'd be down with that. I'd like cool. to see. You should do that in my funeral. I'm now. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't. I don't plan on living too long. So okay. Go for it. Yeah. I got you. Too. I got my first funeral gig. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. So is there anything you got coming up you want to promote or anything? Um, I'll be at the Laugh Factory July 15th. July, all right, yep. cool. They're badass. Right. Yeah. Um, other than that, like weddings and private parties, yeah. but no like clubs. Like, I like your style, by the way. Thank you. It's like 90s or something. Thank is you. It? Is that what it is? It's like, you know, I like the the comb and what the hell is that? Is that a? It's just a surf. But I like the comb. Thank you, guys. Make some fucking noise for Akila! This is hilarious. Thank you so much. We're gonna get some music going, guys. Now tonight they're gonna fucking rock out, ladies and gentlemen. Thing of twins. Put your hands together. Hi, tonight show, episode thirteen. Great to be here. My name is uh, Carlos. Lucio, Lucio, we're gonna play the first song where they get twins again, and uh, we got a first song called Once You Are Mine. It goes like this. It takes time.
fine. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, you're beating the fuck out of your own fucking. Yeah. Just like, pop, pop, man. You think that feel bad? You imagine my drum set? But you don't care, right? You get no, no, into a rhythm it, and like. I, but once I'm in, I'm in. It's like boxing. They don't even feel that shit. Did you guys watch uh, um, Walking Dead? Uh, yeah, yeah I, you know, a couple seasons. Negan? Back. Negan with the, yeah, with the bat? Yeah, yeah. Exactly my drum set. I feel good. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, call, I call my drum set Glenn. Oh, <laughs> so you guys are twins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, all right, so what was it? Y'all been doing music 10 years. 10 years. But y'all have only been, y'all only been thing of twins for a year now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, so y'all, yeah. we were telling, you are telling me, like, what? It's like, what, a lot of trial and error with the... Um, well, you go first. Okay, well, <laughs> so... Uh, we've been part of projects and bands for 10 years. Yeah. Uh, we started since 2009 or 8. We played, uh, we made like a small little band in our uh, middle school, I think. Uh, small little band, our first gig. It's our first gig, we played for a school. And I think we played like two yeah. System of Down songs. You, you played for your school? Yeah, yeah. That's really badass, man. Like, like System of wow. Down songs. Hey, yeah, but yeah. you know what? That's a lot of balls to do that in yeah, front of your yeah. friends yeah, and yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. You had to go to class and They're supportive. They're like, like, that's cool. They're really like, cool. Uh, <laughs> but like, wow. for us, we're very, very critical of what we want to do. So we, we watch it again and we're like, yeah, yeah but but that really didn't stop us, I guess. Uh, and that was you too. That y'all y'all started yeah, together. Yeah, right? 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 a, a, a couple of bands. A couple. Uh, okay. A couple. Of, they don't play music, but they're they're, they're, they're a good friend of ours. Okay. Great friends of ours. Yeah. yeah. Uh, awesome, I see you. Yeah. Hey. Uh, yeah. And so, and yeah, you want to give your high school a shout out. Yeah. 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 Shout out yeah. to everybody, man. What's up? Yeah. 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 So you guys are badass. Over there. So, all right, I want to get this straight. Yeah. Carlos. Yes, yeah. Carlos. Car- I guessed it right. Holy shit. Carlos. And who was born first? Me. Yeah, a couple uh, minutes early. Yeah. One hour early. An hour early. No, 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 he came in first and I came in an hour. Yeah. Right, and you're an hour smarter, right? I was an hour smarter, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> first, <laughs> like, that's true. No, that's true. <laughs> first thing I did, first thing I did when I came out, start crying. Right. Like a little, like a little bit. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, no, right. And you guys are Mexicans? Yes. We're Mexicans. Yes. Just like Mexican me. Americans. Right. I, we look nothing alike, though, yeah, right? Yeah, you would think like, I'm a white lesbian or something. Like, you have nice eyes. That's what I thought like green eyes. It was like, see, my... My grandparents are from Either Chihuahua. Right. There's oh, a bunch of German Mexicans, oh, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spaniards, hazel eyes, light skin. Yeah, I got yeah. all that shit. Yeah. I'm two feet taller than both my parents. I'm a fucking. Yeah, yeah. We have a younger brother. We have a younger brother that's six four. Really? Yeah, he's taller than all of us. Oh yeah. shit! At first, at first, I started speculating. Yeah, he looks nothing like it. Yeah, he looks nothing like us. He's more uh, the Asian look. He looks very really Asian. And you guys are the only musicians in your family? Um, I think so. I'm from mom's side? Yeah, yeah the mom's side. But I, do, I guess for, like, all together, we're the only musicians. And what inspired you? You just started from the very beginning? Uh, I, like, oh, yeah, we've been asked, we've been asked this question, um, but what really started since we were kids, I think we were to start with kindergartens, or, you know, we just loved entertaining people. Yeah. I think because we, we were at a, uh, we started at a, uh, um, Catholic school. Okay. School. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that. Hey! Were y'all singing or something? No, no. Oh, yeah. Oh, they, we started out of school. We didn't, like, there was, like, you know, math and all this. But we were very not interested in sort of stuff like that. And I think when we had plays, we had, like, Christmas stuff, like, Christmas plays. Yeah. And we had to rehearse and stuff, and we're like, we took it to heart. We took it like cool. Like, like most of our friends would be like, kind of like, you, just, you, you, you know, it's gonna like, like, like chorus going on next next thirty minutes. I don't want to be there. And my head I was like, yeah, me too, me too. Like, Again, okay, we're kindergarten, so we're, yeah, we're kindergarten, yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's where this got yeah, started. Like, I'd rather not read than just sing. We yeah. <laughs> yeah. came to you yeah. both kind of at the same yeah. time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then when we, we practice a lot. We, we practice our house, and we like our mom would tell us, oh, what, how we practice. Okay, we'll show it. Ready? Yeah, Now I'll try to sing. You're trying to cut my mouth all the time yeah, because, because he wasn't. Like, I, I feel like he might be yeah. embarrassed. Y'all gonna do a singer? All right, let's go. I yeah. can't yeah. sing. I can't oh, sing. Yeah, so we were entertainers like when we started, and then I guess for a while, like we were kind of, kind of having like a uh, uh, a way to kind of to uh, get an outlet, you know. And I think we we did like break dancing for a while. No like, shit. Yeah. For kids. For kids. Like, you know, yes. If I had room, I swear. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Right. Honestly, I can't do the old moves. I can. Like if I do my yeah. old moves, I can bring my back around. <laughs> Mary and Marty actually band next door can play some again. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, those guys are badass. Yeah. They're, yeah. they're the inspiration. If they play, we dance. Garage <laughs> Rock Studios. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, do you guys have any albums out or anything out? Oh, uh, right now we we're, do. We're, we're clearly we're, we're working we're on it right now. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. these two songs the were from that album. Uh, the first song. Well, we would play one song though. Uh, it was like the first song. Uh, it's not on the album. Okay. But, uh, it's it's like a kind of a newish song or. Yeah. 
Yeah. I really dug it, man. It reminded yeah. me of like some fucking Disney shit where like the nerd yeah. is falling. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, 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 I, I see that. I see that. It was very, like, <laughs> I wrote that when I was in high school. So like, yeah, but I, I like it because that part where it sings back. It's very it, innocent and hopeful. Yeah. I love yeah. that shit, man. Yeah. It was really good. It's good. Like, it's good because a lot of people look at us as like, oh, he's gonna play this, like some mariachi music or something, yeah. and like, no. play, like clean rock and roll like that. And yeah, like, yeah, absolutely. Because like, our our father. Got us to listen to it. We are, I heard the Beatles song. What was one of the songs? What's the song that we played? That was like your <laughs> early influences. Yeah, and then, yeah. but like in the beginning, I hated it because I didn't like it. Yeah, love me, dude. Love me, dude. That was the song. I remember like we're we're traveling for two hours. And I'm sleeping. I'm going to sleep, and my dad plays that song. Do, 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 and he put the volume way up. Crank it up. And I'm like, just shut the fuck. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. you play the Doors or yeah, the Doors. Or, like, oh, oh fuck! Song, while yeah. you're driving. Yeah. Oh yeah. man. Put your eyes. On the road, yeah, the yeah, yeah. Yes. Like that. Like so, that was our, that was our so I guess we got that, that kind of drive, and so and I think I when it started, I think we started in, in, in seventh grade or eighth grade. Yeah, uh, you know, it was eighth grade, then we wanted to become actual musicians, and really you guys are fucking good. doing it, man. Yeah. Yeah. So where can people find you online? I want everyone to look you, you guys it. up. And uh, okay, well, so we have Instagram, uh, Thing of Twins Instagram, also on Facebook, uh, YouTube. We also have we have a couple music videos on um, on yeah. YouTube. Thing of Twins on YouTube. Go yeah, check those out, it. man. You guys are badass. Yeah, thank guys, you. make some noise for Thing of Twins. Yeah. They're gonna come back out at the end. Yeah. Chelsea Gray. And it's uh, and I'm not even high. Look at oh, this. Shit, Go on to okay, great. So we can we need to run this. <laughs> I just got here. I'm like, oh, where is the weed? Like, oh, I need some, some motivation. Thing. Uh, what's up, guys? How you feeling? Yeah. Woo. Oh, wow. It's crazy. It's crazy, y'all. Cause uh, being a black woman in America, you know. I got this hair, you know, I got this hair, you know, it's kind of comes with the package. I, I'm just, because, like, it, living in L.A., everyone wants you to change and conform, you know, and a lot of hoes try to get me to change who I was when I first moved to L.A., and I call them hoes, because they had $1,800 weave in their hair, but they were sleeping on their cousin's floor, you know? <laughs> so, they, I'm like, poor decision-making, okay, clearly. Like, these hoes were like, Chelsea, your hair, like, it's cool and all, but you really should look into getting some weave or some tracks. <laughs> Give yourself some sex appeal. Like, girl, I got my sexy people from God, okay? When he made me a woman, all right? I got my own built-in slice of pie. I'm ready to go, okay? <laughs> no, no, no batteries need necessary. I'm ready, shoot. I did look up the price of weave, though, you know. And uh, after I did, I decided to love myself, okay? All right? I was in the budget. Property will make you secure. <laughs> and it just ain't got no choice. So when I lost 80 pounds on this diet called The Struggle, you know, it was a real diet. Uh, and that's how, how I know I'm from I'm from the East Coast and when I came to LA I was like oh this is how it is out here because on the East Coast you tell somebody you're struggling they'll offer you sympathy or a sandwich you know <laughs> <laughs> out here they're just like oh my god like you lost 75 pounds on a struggle diet like, how does that diet work I mean is it low carb is it gluten free I don't get it just like girl it's food free you and luck it's in the budget <laughs> it's just like it's food free <sighs> you don't care how you lost weight out here right They'd be like, it'd be dangerous, it'd be life threatening. Like, I could tell one of these hoes that I lost 60 pounds drinking a can of lighter fluid. They'll say, Really? Girl, <laughs> what brand of lighter fluid, girl? I'm <laughs> just trying to, at this audition, I kind of just slim down real quick. Uh, I just, well, see, I have a mother, right? She's from Detroit, you know, so she grew up in a rough neighborhood and, like, she had to dodge bullets for real. Like, my mother grew up in, like, one of those Matrix neighborhoods where you gotta be like, ooh, bullet, bullet. <laughs> just, oh, oh, it's a machine gun. Just, uh, that was her life. So I called her because after I lost all that weight, I needed some sympathy because I got a ton of stretch marks, you know. Not those cute stretch marks because some of my little friends were like, Chelsea, like, don't stress because all have stretch marks. And you know white women love the word all, you know. They do love, they like to be inclusive. White women love to be inclusive. It's us and all until the police show up, okay. Then it's you, real quick. They be like, it was him. He had the hoodie and the Skittles. Get him. Get the Skittles. Like, so you white women, they were like, Chelsea, don't worry about it. I'm like, girl, you have to get that erase pencil line on my face, okay? Because I woke up with Google Maps on my hips and thighs, all right? 
I don't know if y'all know what it's like to tell your stretch marks to stop rerouting. Uh, I do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm like, avoid highways. Man, you just need to avoid highways. So I called, I called my mom. I was like, Mom, I have all these stretch marks. What am I supposed to do? She said, remember the, remember the Matrix? She was like, uh, you need to stop tripping about them daggone stretch marks, girl. There's folks walking around these streets that ain't got no skin. But I was like, Mama, who do you know walking around with no skin, though? And I've been calling me in conversation. That was, and racism would end that day. The first skinless sighting, okay? They'd be like, Trump was sent out an APB. He'd be like, listen, all black people, we're sorry for slavery, oppression, just everything, okay? It's no more race. It's skin and no skin, okay? You pick your side. Pick your side. Oh, man. I am single. Uh, I've been single for a while. My whole life. Been, my whole life been single. Uh, you know, I think I used to think it was me. You know, I think it was my fault that I was single. And then I met men, and I was like, oh, it's not me. <laughs> it's not me. It's y'all. Because uh, cause the way dudes like try to approach me, right? I had a dude come to me one time. He was like, hey, yeah. Hey, girl. Hey. How you doing, girl? Hey, girl. I had to remind him. I was like, sir, you are 5'2". You should make yourself shorter when you haul up. Like, you should watch Animal Planet. They get larger. You know. Reference peacocks. <laughs> Reference peacocks. He was like... He's like, oh, well, you know, I just want to let you know that you're beautiful, but you'd be way more beautiful if you wore your hair straight. <laughs> yeah. No. I was like, sir, you would be way more tolerable if you never spoke, actually. <laughs> oh, silence? You need to look at it. Uh, also, I had to remind this fool that he was bald, okay? Like, I don't know why dudes with the least hair want to give the most advice about it. It's too late, okay? Whatever products you use, they failed. Just, <laughs> they failed. I, I used, it's not just men though, you know, because I used to think it was just like dudes and their little standards. Because dudes be having crazy standards. Like, you ever met some of these dudes out here? I, one of my homies tried to tell me he wouldn't date Nicole Kidman because her neck was too long. I was like, sir, you woke up at 6 p.m., didn't shower, went to Burger King, okay? Nikki's not checking for you, okay? <laughs> like, over here, dudes be wanting tens, but they be acting like negative 999,000 out here. Just, just, okay, we got some negatives in the audience. Sorry, y'all. We just, you know. <laughs> Don't be mad at me. Don't be bringing us ladies into deficits. That be game up. <laughs> but some of these ladies need to chill out too, you know? Like some of these married hoes need to let go of their side dudes so I can have a shot, okay? Because <laughs> I didn't realize how many married girls were out here. Like, one of my homegirls from college, she's married. I was hanging out with her, and she got mad because I was her guy friend from 10 years ago was talking to me. She was like, ah, you know that that's my man when I'm in L.A. I'm like, oh, so marriage is just from state to state, girl, because your ring is still on. I need you to <laughs> chill out. Like... And then she tried to tell me, she was like, well, Chelsea, you may have to leave Los Angeles to find a man. It's hard out here. I'm like, girl, you have seven, okay? Just no wonder. No wonder. Uh, I do, uh, I, I'm free, guys. I used to work in restaurants. I'm free, but I don't work in restaurants anymore, so I've survived. But I, I, when I was in restaurants, I was the only black female server there, you know? So that afforded me a magic power, because the customers got excited when I just did my job, right? I never do anything. I just have to show up, basically. They be like, oh my God, look at that movement. Oh, she's just, look, look at that trot. She's just so energetic. She's gonna grab and salt. Look at that. Just, <laughs> I had this old customer. He was an old, old, old white. He was older than the N-word. Like, that's how old he was. You know, when you predicate racial terms, you are old, okay? He asked me, um, young lady, what's, what's this radish show? What's radish show on this salad? I said, oh, sir, that's radicchio. That's a bitter leafy green. He said, wow, look at you, hold on, lady. Why don't you know how to say everything on the menu? <laughs> don't ya? We should take this show on the road. I'm like, sir, you can't afford me, okay? <laughs> Not a free package. At the end of the conversation, he tried to ask me. He was like, well, okay, fine. Well, what, tell me tell me what this chazé plate is. What's chazé? I said, sir, do you mean the cheese plate? Okay. Because that's what it is. <laughs> what it's always been. Dudes out here shazaying, just shazays. Oh, I'm sweating and stuff, you know? But that's okay, you know, I gotta, use, I gotta figure something out because, you know, lights and stuff are everywhere, right? I be in the sun, I be like, dang, sun, like, can I get a wind? I just sweaty. If you are ever having a bad day, I, I would love for you to do what I do and take a pregnancy test, okay? Yeah. Because, ooh, something about that minus sign make you feel relief, right? <laughs> you be like, oh, I got a future hope break. Check. I, don't. I guess even if you do have kids, it's nice to know another one's not on the way now, okay? 
Because I know some of y'all are secret fathers out here. <laughs> I did not know this. Like, I got homies I know for six years. Like, yeah, my son graduated high school. You're a father? Like, you, you've been replicated? I don't get it. I've been replicated. Just, I don't get it. Uh, I do like compliments, though. I'm a big fan of compliments. Like, uh, uh, Cause I, I know we like to feel good as women and I feel like sometimes we go out and guys just like give lazy compliments Like I could look like I just got ready for the Met Gala and I feel like the most of straight guys gonna be like Oh, yeah, you look good. You look cute. You look uh, pretty You look reliable. You look really really reliable <laughs> Just like uh, reliable sir. You just give me a used car compliment <laughs> like, I'm, I'm not a 92 Chevy. I'm popping this I'm not reliable I don't know, but that's why I love my gays, because you know my gays, my gay men, they give me the best compliments, right? And you don't even have to have on a whole outfit. Like, with gay men, you can have on a shoe, okay? You can have on one shoe, and they'll be like, ah, girl, I see you on that shoe, girl. Yes. Got me, man. Got me, girl. Got me. Got me. Got me. Got me. Got me. Got me. Girl, you're killing me, killing me. I'm dead. I'm dead. You're probably back to life because the shoe is living. Yeah. I'm like, my, my shoe is alive. Thank you. Gotta chill out because the gays be giving them cardio compliments. They be like, ah, you like, all right, we're going to take this compliment in instructions. Okay, I need instructions and installments for this compliment. And then the girls need instructions. Uh, I'll uh, I'll end on this. Uh, you gotta know, you gotta know what you have to offer, guys. You gotta know what you have to offer. Cause like I, I used to compare myself to some of these arm candy chicks out here. Y'all know arm candy chicks. They're drop dead gorgeous. They get taken out to really nice restaurants like Catch. They can't spell Catch at all. <laughs> but they be on they be on Instagram. Look, me and my ah hi tuna. <laughs> Just like girl, enunciate. I need you to enunciate. <laughs> Yeah, but I had to realize like I'm not, you know, an arm candy chick, you know. I am arm entree, however. <laughs> All right, I am not a Twizzler. I'm a ribeye steak with some mashed potatoes, some gravy, and some greens. Okay, <laughs> don't forget the sweet potato pie. All right, on this side. All right, guys. Uh, I'm gonna go get high, but I had a great time tonight. You guys are awesome. Woo! Cheers. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesse Gray. Yeah. I'm so glad you made it. I Tanya with my friend drinking rosé earlier, <laughs> All right. and I passed out. Okay. And then like around like five, you know you fall asleep, you're like, I'm gonna take a nap, and you wake up, it's like, it's tomorrow. I just, <laughs> whoops. That's why I like taking naps at all. I, I wake up scared and shit, I was like, how old is my son? Like, I'm like, I'm like, Dude, I, I'm black, I gotta take naps so I can stay woke. Really? <laughs> <laughs> gotta stay woke. <laughs> gotta stay woke, they don't catch you creeping. Yeah. What is that song? I don't know, something like Some, that. Yeah, catch you creeping. Yeah. Okay, we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll, let, we'll let him do it. I love him. I love him. But um, how you been? Man, you know, I've been groovy, you know, out these streets, just, you know, telling jokes and stuff, trying to like, stay focused, keep work, working out. I'm glad, you, kind of... I'm glad I could finally get you out. Yeah, You're I'm glad. hilarious. You killed Thank that you. shit. Thank you. Thank you. What is your shirt? You know, I have no idea who this band is. Uh, <laughs> I, you know, you sometimes you'll be at the thrift shop. You like a dollar? I don't know who this is. Like, I mean, <laughs> when right. you want a budget, you be like, I'll get a swastika shirt. For I was a ready to be schooled on like <laughs> really. something I didn't even know about. I was ready to be like, who's Abby Normal? They no one knows who they are. My mind or something. <laughs> no, 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 no. So, um, you are from what was it again? <laughs> I'm from Northern Virginia by D.C., the DMV area. The DMV area. Yeah. D.C., like Washington. Like, no, d uh, I'm from, like, Manassas. It's, like, a little town, like, just outside of D.C., about 30 minutes from D.C., Northern Virginia. Yeah. No shit. Yep. And you were you grew up out there. Did you start doing comedy out there? No, I started out here, actually. I started out here in 2012, November 2012. No shit. Yep. Wow. So you've been doing it almost as long as me. I have, yeah, like, almost five, six years now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, just on the grind and stuff. There's something about it, right? I respect the way you smoke yeah. with the comedy. You know, some people, I mean, you know, all power to them. They don't, you know, before, after, I go during, you know? Fuck yeah. it. If I can smoke on the stage, I will. Right. Those are the mics I try to go to. Well, right. Which, I mean, you know, it makes it selective. Maybe it's in a smaller pool of mics. You're like, dang, okay, it's only two mics I can go to, but I can smoke. Yeah. Have you been doing, like, 
Have you been smoking as long as you've been doing comedy or come at the same time? Oh, uh, actually, um, I started smoking like a year before I did, started doing stand up. Which oh, I remember you did like a little bit later too. Yeah, yeah I was uh, I was twenty three when I started. I smoked weed for the first time. Yeah. Man. I had to wait till I found somebody I trusted, you know what I'm saying? Because, <laughs> you know, I had people offer me in college, but I was like, mm, I don't like the way your eyes look. I'm just going <laughs> to wait till I find somebody I can trust. <laughs> you're like, oh, man, it's look this weed. I'm like, you're foaming at the mouth. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it's not your weight. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I always tell people that. I'm like, get this shit, bro. Right, right, right. If I had that truth, you would have first off me weed, I might have never smoked. No, yeah, I'm like, 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 I'm you know, and I sent out my, I had a really good reporter tape. I sent it out to 12 stations, you know, in I'd Virginia. I'd love to see that. Yeah, I'd love to see it too, but I sent it out to 12 stations and, you know, I didn't get hired because racism, you know. All so, right, right. My, they were like, oh, black reporter, not yet. Uh, <laughs> so I got a job producing at this uh, local station, the CBS affiliate in Richmond, Virginia. I worked there for almost three years as a, as a producer, associate producer. And you kept that going. Now you're producing over here at Secret Black People Meeting. I am, I am, I am. Channel I love 310. that. And so, so tell people about the show. Um, yeah, no, basically, uh, Secret Black People Meeting, um, the host is now is Aston, very funny comedian. Uh, he basically, you know, talk, interviews black people. You know, no offense to others, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's exclusive. It's kind of in the title. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, some Latinos been hitting us up like, what's up, get by something like next time. <laughs> or a new show. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, but it's, it's really funny. And I do a segment called Grow Up where I basically... And just telling people, like, how it is. You know, I try to pick two groups of people, like men and women, or black people, white people, rich people, you know, everyone else. And uh, just kind of talk about, like, oh, like, how we each need to grow up so that we can start relating to each other better, essentially, right. as a whole. Yeah, right. You Maturity know. is very important. Yeah, mm -hmm. It's, like, fucking lost all the time. Even if you think you're mature, you catch yourself on days of just being a fucking child, right? No. Like, it's, like, not always a constant thing. Yeah. Um, but, uh, and that's a play on your last name, right? Gro yeah, so my last name is Gro, it's spelled G-R-E-A-U-X, uh, it's, it was French, um, yeah, my grandfather was from St. Thomas, the Virgin Islands, so that's wow. what, yeah, yeah, so I tripled in. So it's actually technically, technally, technically, it's De La Gro. I found this out recently. It's uh, De, my my full last name was De La Gro, but basically, when my grandfather got to the military, everyone kept making fun of him and, and mispronouncing it. So he's like, you know what? It's just Gro. So it's just kind of been like that. You should try that sometime. Chelsea De La Gro. I think we've conformed for white people enough. You know? <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, just, oh, just like hilarious. listen and repeat. <laughs> Chelsea, do you have anything coming up you want to promote? Do, yeah, um, you know, I have a show at uh, Flappers Comedy Club next Sunday. Um, uh, it's called, thank you very Flappers? much. Flappers? Yeah, um, it's at Flappers. Um, it's called Show Your Shorts. So um, it's essentially, it's we show short films, comedy, and, and dramatic films, and I do like some time up top and, and some time in between the shows. But that's going to be uh, next Sunday at Flappers at 7 p.m. So cool. if you want to come check that out. Wow, short but yeah, films. Yeah, so show your shorts. Shorts with a Z, you know? So. I see. And how long are those? Oh, they can be anywhere between like three minutes to like twenty minutes on average. Yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. Wow. So if you want to submit, you know. I'd love to. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Where would you find that at? Uh, show your shorts. Um. So sh uh, S H O W Y O U R S H O R T Z at gmail dot com. So if you have a short film, comedic or dramatic, and you want to submit it, usually try to keep them twenty minutes or less. You know, if it's good, send a twenty five. But this, it's fun, you know. And I get to watch movies for free, so I'm always about that. <laughs> That's badass. Yeah. I love that. Guys, make some noise for Chelsea! Yeah. 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 So this next song is gonna be on our uh, album that we're com that's coming up soon. Uh, we're, we're, we're working on ourselves. We're making the whole production ourselves. So All right. it's kind of having a slow. This, this song's actually getting the album. All yeah, right. it's a lot slower, but you know we have the real version is a little faster. But kind of, I guess. But this song's called Strange yeah, Feelings.
my zipper up? All right, so guys, I'm sure you're wondering, why is this lesbian being so loud on stage? What the hell is Rosie O fucking Boner doing up there yelling and shit? What is Chaz Bonner doing? I know, I got perky man titties. Listen, guys, I'm a Mexican male, all right? I know I look like neither, and... <laughs> I mean, believe it or not, Spanish was my first language, but you know what happened is I grew up, I ate out a bunch of white girls, I can't even handle spicy food anymore. All right, the only spice I do is pumpkin spice at Starbucks, okay? That's what I